I want you to understand that each and every one of us have been made in the image of God. And God is spirit. Nobody has seen God before. However, we read in the scriptures that he made us in his image. And so when it comes to the things of God, it is very essential that you cultivate a certain mindset to reach out by faith to touch this God. Hallelujah. You cannot know God by your natural senses. It comes by reaching out from the bottom of your heart to connect to him and believe that he is and that he knows your thoughts. He knows your yesterday. He knows your today. And he knows your tomorrow. And having come to that conclusion, you have you to make a decision to rest in that knowledge. And to just walk with him through the knowledge that he gives us in his word. Amen. Amen. This morning I want to talk about God of hope. God of hope. Hallelujah. I want to read some things that I wrote down here. The biblical definition is just one definition of hope. Hope, according to the Bible, is a confident expectation and desire for something good in the future. It is rooted usually in God's word or promise. Amen. So, this is different from you know, I hope things will work out next week. You know, I hope, you know, those type of hope is man-made. But this type of hope that we are talking about, it is, is a very firm conviction and expectation. That a promise that God has made to us will definitely be fulfilled, whatever the circumstances of life. Amen. That is the difference. When it comes to man, it can fail. But when it comes to God, you got to hold on. So this means that you need to be very focused. You need to be determined. You need to make up your mind and be tough. Don't be some easy kind of weak individual who is easily tossed. By the circumstances of life. But if you are rooted in Christ. If you are rooted in the word of God. It becomes your anchor. You hold on to it and you never let go. Amen. Amen. And if you can do that. Not by your strength. But your total reliance on the truth of God's word. Knowing that in you there is nothing that you can do. Except through God. If you can come to that conclusion. And endure. The circumstances that will come to challenge you. Hallelujah. Even Jesus exercised hope. Hallelujah. Because when he came to the world. The Bible says that. He had to endure the contradiction of sinners. And so what did he do? He says looking for the joy that was set before him. He endured the cross. Despising the shame. Hallelujah. Because he, his eye was on something. It was a goal. It was a plan that he had with the father. And there were so many things that were coming against him. But he believed so much that God was able to raise him from the dead. Hallelujah. And so he faced the cross. That is why I want to read the Bible. It says that when the time approached for him to go to the cross, he set his face like a flint, like a rock. He was determined that I'm going to go all the way and die. That is hope. Hallelujah. A lot of people don't exercise hope. You know, when you're in the church, we talk a lot about faith. But you can't talk about faith without talking about hope. Hope is a firm 
conviction. Hallelujah. And so this morning, I want us to go through some scriptures just to help throw some light on this topic and to give us some understanding. And I pray that through this, you be grounded, firm, indeed. Hallelujah. It says, lead us to the rock that is higher than I. Hallelujah. You know, you want to be established on the firm rock. Glory be to God. When you have hope in God, it can change any situation that is contrary. Anything that is working against you, if you have hope in God, it can change it. Hallelujah. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 1. Ah, hallelujah. Hebrews chapter 12 says, Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witness. It is very, very important for you to understand that statement. What the Bible is saying is that in this world, as a child of God, you are not alone. There are observers who are observing your life. These are the people who have gone. Before us, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, uh, David, and all those people who have gone. If you, if you read the Bible, you find in chapter 11 how God has decided that they will not even be made perfect until we have come to the fact when everything has become complete and they gain that resurrection body. We all come together as one body. Hallelujah. But they exercise faith in Christ. And they went through believing and trusting God. And now they are standing in the grandstands, if you will. It is like they are cheering us on. And they are saying, don't give up. Some people give up so quickly. I don't know what you may be going through. But look, every family has an issue. And it's ever since... I became aware of good and bad as a young man. I've seen challenges. I've seen it. I saw problems bloom and sometimes they are overcome. In my own family growing up, I saw it. Problems come and they go. The way you handle it is very, very important. And ever since I became a child of God, I have never, I have never been without any kind of challenges. There will always be some challenges that you have to deal with in life. Always. And when we marry, oh, even there, the challenges are more. They are more. It seems like, oh, when you marry, everything is just like, oh, roses, bed of roses. But guess what? It doesn't take long before certain things because it is like two different individuals who are trying to live together. And they all have different backgrounds and stuff and they come together. And sometimes it's very hard. It's very difficult. But when Christ becomes the center of our actions, it makes a big difference. Hallelujah. That is how we defeat Satan. When we hold on to the word of God. Amen. And the families that we have, we all have different challenges. But I'm here this morning to just draw your attention to the importance of having hope in God. Hallelujah. Because if you have hope, then you must work towards it. You must not leave everything to just chance. Because it is only by faith that you can please God. Hallelujah. Without faith, it is impossible. And faith and hope, they work together. So, let's go through this again. It says, seeing, having come to the understanding that there are people or spirits. Because in this sense, they are not physical beings anymore. They have 
been called, they have died and gone, but they are still existing because we are eternal beings. And so the Bible says that since we are surrounded by this cloud of witnesses, what does that mean? Witness. When you call somebody to stand in the witness stand in court, the person is come to testify that, oh, yes, I know this man, I know this woman, and I can say X, Y, Z about him. I can tell you for fact, and I have to swear and make an oath that everything I'm about to say is the truth and nothing but the truth. So this cloud of witnesses are people who have exercised faith in God's word. They have experienced all the challenges that you can even imagine that humans face. When you read the book of Hebrews chapter 11, you see a whole list of them. And they were able to overcome. And the Bible says that these are the cloud of witnesses who are surrounding us. They are observing us. So you can see that even though some of our loved ones are dead and gone, they can observe us from that environment. Because God is spirit. And they that worship him, hallelujah, must worship him in spirit and truth. The Bible says in the book of Revelation how John saw all these saints who had died, who were before God and Praising him and giving him glory. And so we know that this, is, this life is just temporary. So have that habit, that mindset that anytime you are talking to God, you are dealing with an entity who is number one. He knows your thoughts before you can even think. He knows your yesterday and he knows everything about you. So when you begin to communicate with God, just... Let him into your space, into your world, and believe that he is engaged through his word, and you will be strengthened and encouraged. Hallelujah. So, he says that, Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight. And the sin which does so easily beset, it does not mention specifically what sin it is. But you know yourself, the things that easily beset you, the things that easily trip you, and you get yourself on the other side. Some people get so quickly offended. And when they are offended, they don't read the Bible. They don't, read, they don't go to church. They, they, they distance themselves from Christians, etc., etc., just because of X, Y, Z. The Bible says that get rid of those habits. Okay? It can, it can work negatively against your life. So he says, let us run with what? Patience. The race that is set before us. So patience is needed. It is required if you want to experience the fullness of God. Hallelujah. Amen. God is not just something or a being who does instantly. He can do things instantly. But at the same time, we have to know God's character, that he works through a process. And if you are going to let God work in your life, you must learn to be patient. And when we are patient, when you are in the process where it is inconvenient, what you need to do is in verse 2. It says, looking unto what? Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him, Endured what? The cross. A cross is what? Painful thing. He was nailed. He was, he was punished. And his whole body was cut. I mean, all over. Front and back. From top to bottom. He suffered. And his side was speared with a sword. A spear. And his hands, they nailed him. So, the Bible says he endured. How did he endure? Because his eyes was on the finish, the prize. So you too, whatever your pain, whatever your suffering, whatever the things you think you are going through, 
between you and your wife, be, between your children or your finances or your health. You know what? Have hope in God. The God who has called you to be a family is going to work things out and bring you on the other side victorious, more than conquerors, if you hold on to this word. Hallelujah. That's how hope works. You, you need to have a determined mind. You got to believe God, that God is at work in you, both to will and to do of his good pleasure. So Jesus, because of the joy that was set before him, he endured the cross. And he despised the shame. And because of that, he sat now on the right-hand side of the Father. So he says in verse 3, consider him. Consider him. Think about Jesus. He is our uh, prototype. He is, he is the prime example. The one who was able to do it and succeeded. And he went through not you know, fighting what God had laid for him to go through. The Bible says, as a sheep, before its shears is dumb, he did not say a word. And they did to him all that they did. But at the end of the day, God the Father raised him from the dead. So he says that, consider Jesus, lest you be worried. And what? Faint in your mind. So you can see that your mind needs to be very, very settled in God and not man. You see, you may be experiencing very, very severe pain and disappointment in your home, your family. You are wondering if something can change your situation. Please remember this. With God, nothing is impossible. Hallelujah. You see, when you look at it from your own lenses, it seems that this is it. This is the end. But you must begin to consult God and let God fill your heart with that revelation of Christ. How is it that a man can die? And be buried. And then on the third day, how, how is that possible? How, how, think through it. How is that possible? That on the third day, he should rise again from the dead. So God is using that to show you that if he's able to do that, that the issues of life that you face in your marriage or children or family or finances, or your job situation, God is able to do far more. Hallelujah. Those things, they are nothing for him. He can do. And this is what makes God what? Holy. God is holy in the sense that there's nothing, everything that you can imagine, he can do it. That's what makes him holy. He's, he's pure. Most of us, when we go to the store, you want to buy some, some you know, whatever product, you're looking for quality. Because you want to pay money for something that is worthwhile, that can go a long way. And when you buy a product which is not very good, it doesn't last. But when we are talking about God, God's products, they are always eternal. They are perfect. They are marvelous. They are wonderful. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And they will outlast any other thing on the surface of the earth. Hallelujah. Real hope, when you have taken hold of hope, it brings joy and peace in your life. I want you to understand that. Romans chapter 15 verse 13. When you want to exercise hope in God, one of the, you know, the cardinal signs that you see in your life is that you are person that is always full of joy and peace and happiness. You don't see gloom on your face. You don't walk about like you are carrying the weight of the world. No. Because the joy of the Lord is your strength. Hallelujah. 
So the Bible says in Romans 15, 13, now the God of hope. So our God, apart from many other things, he's a God of hope. Hallelujah. Now the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in what? Believing. Believe. Believe. Let your heart embrace the truth of his word. That you may abound in hope. Let it overflow. Don't let your confidence be diminished. Things may... I mean, how is it possible that Mary and Martha, their brother Lazarus, first he was sick and was very ill, and then he died. And so, humanly speaking, that is the end. When Jesus arrived on the scene, what did they say? If only you had been here. If only. Because you are thinking as a man. But Jesus, when he came on the scene, he says that if you believe in me, you will see the resurrection. Because I am the resurrection and the life. Man, Mother and Mary look at you. Know, what are you talking about? Hallelujah. And a lot of times that is how the word of God comes to us. But God's word is supposed to be received by faith. Hallelujah. This is God's commitment to you. It is his promise to you. So if he says that I am the resurrection and the life, and he has proved it to us. And I believe that it is because of the lack of understanding. That is why Jesus wept. As he was going towards the tomb of Lazarus. Because people just couldn't figure out. What he was trying to explain. If you believe, it is possible. It is possible. Hallelujah. And you see how the mind and logic will work against you. Oh, he's been dead for three or four days. Oh, he's thinking right now. Oh, there are worms. Oh, come on, let's not do this. Come on. You are going to just embarrass us by opening this tomb. To try to get, no, 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 Jesus, no, 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 no. You see, that is all human thinking, logic. They were not in the dimension that Christ was coming from. God is spirit, always remember that. And so when God says something that he can do, better believe it and work with it. Hallelujah. And so it says, abound in hope. Let it overflow. Let your life demonstrate that no matter what is happening, you are the happiest person on the earth. No matter what is happening, you continue to love one another. No matter what is happening, you continue to rejoice in hope. Hallelujah. It says, now the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing. I plead with you. Sometimes it's very important when you come to church. Take a pen and paper. There might be a scripture that we'll read. And God may want you to go back and look at that scripture again for that week. And let God speak to you. Hallelujah. He says, that joy and peace, let it abound in hope. Remember, hope is that confident assurance. That something that you desire. In the future, it's going to happen. So, you are looking forward to it with all concentration through the power of the Holy Ghost. So, the Holy Ghost helps us. Hallelujah. There is something that is called vanity, something that is vain. Anything that is vain. Is something which is really, it has no substance. Hallelujah. You know. So I want you to look at something in scripture to help you just understand this subject. So I found out something in the Bible called lying vanities. Lying vanities. These are false imaginations that are not rooted or grounded in the word of God. When, you see, some people tend to believe certain things because of society and culture or because of your experience. 
you know, sometimes you want to use your experience to override God's word and truth. So that becomes a false imagination, which is not rooted or grounded in the word of God. False imaginations can lead us far from the will and ways of God. Many people have been deceived by these lying vanities. And like Jonah, they pay the great price for their spiritual detours. We must bring our thoughts captive to the obedience of Christ. And make certain that the information we believe is in agreement with the word of God. Amen. In Jonah chapter 2, verse 7 to 10. You remember Jonah. God told him. Go to Nineveh and preach to the people. And Jonah packed his things and he ran away from God, supposedly, thinking that he could escape. That is called lying vanities because look at what he himself said. He says, when my soul fainted within me, I remember the Lord. Hallelujah. Because he had had run. He didn't want to do what God asked him to do. But When he left, problems began to arise. And that's what happens typically. When you are drifting away from God, your problems will compound. You have more and more difficulties. You will be wondering why God. Even you can fast 21 days, nothing will happen. Hallelujah. You see, something about fasting I want you to understand. Some people think that when you just fast... It, it, it just ties God's hand and it has to happen. It doesn't happen like that. You got to walk in the will of God. Hallelujah. Jesus who fasted 40 days, he had to submit himself to the Father all the way to the cross. That is why he was able to rise again from the dead. But as humans, we don't want to go through the pain and the sacrifice. We just want to do the fasting and God must do his part. No, it doesn't work like that. So Jonah was on a run, but he encountered so many problems when he went on that ship. And the boat, they tossed him into the ocean, right? And he was swallowed by a big fish, which was all God's own plan. But then when he was in the belly of that big fish, uh, fish, he came to understanding and realization. And this is where it is important To allow God's word to humble you. Some people are just too proud and stubborn. You know what you're supposed to do. God is touching you. But still, because of your pride, you don't want to change. But Jonah says, when my soul fainted within me. That means he became exhausted. Your marital problems can exhaust you. It can weigh you down. Your children can make you tired. Your financial crisis can make you exhausted. You got to sit back and observe and try to analyze and say, why am I going wrong? Let me fix this thing by the grace of God. Hallelujah. He says, my soul fainted within me. And I remember the Lord. And my prayer came in unto thee, into thine holy temple. They that observe lying vanities. This is where I saw it. Life, they forsake their own mercy. To observe means you are keeping certain traditions and beliefs which is not scriptural. So you are observing those things. For instance, I, 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 I can forgive, but I will not forget what you did to me. Or s- stuff like that. I'm not going to let go. Because of what you did, I'm going to make sure that you pay a price. Or, or you know, How do you call? Because of what you've done, I'm going to do X, Y, and Z just to make your life miserable. Where is love? I want you to understand that no matter what is happening in your life, in your marriage, in your family, if you can exercise love, it will knock out everything in God's own time. Hallelujah. Love is your greatest weapon. But you don't know. The devil deceives you. How is it possible that through love, God should come into the world? And then Satan thinking that Jesus was weak, crucified him. 
But it was through that love that took him to the cross because he wanted to redeem us. God the Father raised him from the dead. Hallelujah. If you follow that principle and do it for God's sake, because this is the pattern that he has put down for us, and endure the pain, endure the shame, endure the embarrassment, endure the disappointments, endure all those things that are working contrary to you and your family. But you commit it unto God, waiting for your day of redemption and operating by love, not holding back that which the other person deserves. Even though he or she has offended you. But you keep pouring your love into the person's life. Can you imagine how God will observe you from heaven and be so excited for you believing and doing what Jesus did. Showing and demonstrating the same example. Hallelujah. Go back to the previous verse 8. So, lying vanities are all those false imaginations that is not rooted in the word of God. Be very careful. The kind of decisions you make in your individual families. Be very careful. Hallelujah. That is why it is important to be led by the Spirit. Hallelujah. You notice that in this church, there are certain things that... Over the years, you know, we are trying to just not follow other churches. But we do what we believe God is leading us to do. Hallelujah. You need to know God for yourself. Hallelujah. All those things, they are not bad in themselves. But it has become like just a tradition. That people do those things just by thinking that when you observe. Those practices, God is obligated to do the things that you want. It has not worked like that. Praise the Lord. Don't observe lying vanities. Don't think that the position that you are holding, which is actually not rooted in the word of God. And sometimes you can even use scripture to try to justify your actions. But... You know, because God is spirit and you are spirit. God made you in his image. So when God talks to you, you know. But a lot of us are stubborn and we don't want to admit it. He says, when you do that, you forsake your own mercy. Anybody who humble himself and receive God's correction, God's mercy will come into your life. Hallelujah. So don't let that mercy forsake you. Verse 9. But I will sacrifice unto thee the voice of thanksgiving. That's the next topic I'm hoping I can work on if all goes well for next Sunday. What it means to make a sacrifice of thanksgiving. You know, sacrifice is like you're cutting, you're killing. We need to get into those understanding and, and bring them and see how it fits into this narrative. Because for you to praise God, when things are not right, it's not always easy. Hallelujah. But God is requiring it of us. To thank Him and to praise Him, even when things are not right. So in this context, Jonah found himself in the middle of nowhere in the ocean. Where he saw himself that he was going to die in the belly of the whale. But he began to change his language. And he began to offer unto God sacrifice of thanksgiving. Because he realized that at this point, man, I'm dead. And when he did that, the Bible says, what? He, he recognized and he began to, you know, sing these praises and say things to God. Let's look at verse 10. So after he has said that, said that is, or, or it's all all. No verse 10, right? There is. Yeah. Cool. yeah. And the Lord spake unto the fish. And it vomited out Jonah upon the dry land. Hallelujah. So you can see that when he was in 
distress. <laughs> he began, when he came to his realization, he began to praise God. He began to thank God and say, God, I, you know, I, I, I missed it. But I've come to the place where I'm acknowledging you that you are the answer. You know the best way out. I'm not feeling very happy about it, about what is going on. I didn't want to go and preach in any way. God, I didn't want to do it. But you know what? I see that your wisdom is far greater than mine. And if I don't yield, I will miss your mercies. Something like that. So I thank you and bless you. you began to, you know, praise God. The Bible says, and the Lord speak unto the fish. Huh? God can speak. He created all the animals and he spoke. Oh, that is so beautiful. For God to speak to a fish. Hallelujah. And he told the fish, fish, get him out. You know, let him out. Hallelujah. And the Bible says, the fish vomited out Jonah upon the dry land. May God... Speak to the fish in your life. Hallelujah. <laughs> but first of all, before that happens, be humble. Hallelujah. <laughs> God is good. There is something about hope that is very important. It builds anticipation. When you are hoping for something, you begin to look forward to it. So that is why I'm saying that in order to Operate in hope, you need to have this kind of constant focus of mind set on what God has revealed to you through his word that he will do, his promise. And you don't let go of his word. Because God's word is meant to be fulfilled. Romans chapter 4 verse 17 says that, As it is written, I have made thee a father of many nations before him whom he believed, even God. Who quickeneth the dead and calleth those things we be not as though they were. That's scripture. Are you seeing what the Bible is saying concerning Abraham? It says, at, as it is what? Written. I have made thee a father of me. You know, it is written. God had made the promise. But it did not happen immediately. It took about 25 years for Abraham to experience Isaac's birth. But all along he believed. He believed. And I've told you this before a couple of times. Can you imagine? Because it was going to happen between, you know, he and Sarah coming together intimately. And only God knows how many times they may have tried. But nothing was happening. But each time that, you know, it did not happen. The Bible says, let's read on. Verse 18. Who against hope, what? Believed in hope. So year number one, nothing happened. It seemed like hope will be dashed, but he did not. He believed in the next year. And the next year. And the, so who against hope, he believed in hope. He never gave up. Never give up. God's word will never fail. When you are latched onto it, God's word will never, it will come to be fulfilled in our lives. Hallelujah. So that he might become the father of many nations. According to that which was spoken, so shall thy seed be. Okay, let's go on. And being not weak in faith, he considered not his own body now dead when he was about a hundred years old. When God spoke to him, he was 75. Okay? Now he was 99, getting to 100. Look at all those years. Against hope, he believed in hope. Okay, so he endured. He endured. It wasn't a very easy thing, but he endured. And the Bible says he, he continued to give glory to God. Neither yet that deadness of Sarah's womb, verse 20. He's targeted not at the promise of God through unbelief, but he was strong in faith, giving glory to God. How many of us are able to give glory to God? Do you know what it means to give glory to God? 
When you give glory to God, it means that you are releasing the control of the matter out of your hands into his hands. You are giving because you know that he's the only one who can fix it. So you are willing to go by his rules and, you know, commandments. And so whatever he says, you are willing to do. So you are giving glory to God that the, the, the solution that you have, the method that you have proposed through your word, I'm willing to go with it. That is how you give glory to God. It is not just by your mouth that you say it. No, it is by obeying what he has said in his word. That is how you give glory to God. Hallelujah. And so when we come here on Sunday and say, oh Lord, I give you glory. Okay, yes, you have said it with your mouth. But what are the issues unfolding in your life practically that you are willing to sacrifice for him? That is what proves to God that truly you worship him, not only with your lips, but also with your heart. Praise the Lord. Verse 21 says, uh, and being fully persuaded that what he had promised, he also was able to perform. May God speak to you. Psalm 146, verse 5. He says, happy is he that has the God of Jacob for his help, whose hope is in the Lord his God. Happy. So when, when God is your hope, you are not a miserable person at all. You are always happy because... You know, it's not a big deal. You know that God is going to take care of things. But when you don't re release the situation into his hands and you are trying to control it by your own methods, okay, then it's going to be a burden for you. It becomes difficult to navigate or to maneuver. And so even happiness will not be there in your life. It will just be an appearance. But the Bible says, happy is he that had the God of Jacob for his help. Whose hope is in the Lord is God. Luke chapter 11 verse 5. It says, And he said unto them, Which of you shall have a friend? And shall go unto him at midnight and say unto him, Friend, lend me three loaves. For a friend of mine is in journey, is come to me, and I have nothing to set before him. And he from within shall answer and say, Trouble me not. The door is now shut. And my children are with me in bed. I cannot rise and give thee. I say unto you, though he will not rise and give him, because he is his friend, yet because of what? His importunity. That means persistence. You'd never give up. He never gave up. He kept knocking. He says, because you kept knocking, your friend, your neighbor, he's going to rise and give you what you need. Hallelujah. In the same vein, if you never give up, you keep trusting God. You keep thanking God. Oh God, I thank you for my wife. I thank you for my husband. I thank you for my children. I thank you. Things are not what they're supposed to be. But I thank you. You are the one who is able to transform their lives. Therefore, I thank you for a good day that is coming. I thank you. I thank you for change that is coming. I thank you for my wife. I thank you that you are touching that. Hello. Begin to say all the things that constitute love rooted in the word of God. And God will honor it. Hallelujah. You give the glory to God. Give the glory to God. Don't listen to your pain. Don't listen to your fears. Oh, if I do it. Ah, people say I'm weak. You know, sometimes when you compare yourself with other people, people, other families, you disappoint yourself because you are looking at them instead of Jesus. Look to Jesus. Jesus is the answer. It's not your friend. You know, we are supposed to encourage each other and, you know, support each other. But if you are looking at your, your, your you know, somebody can insult their wife today, right? Very nicely. I don't know whether I should use it that way. Insult, you know. Okay. <laughs> but what I mean, you, you know what I'm say, saying, right? You do it in front of your friends. And they will say, oh man, this man, he doesn't take nonsense. Huh? And he tells you, and you, say, and you encourage him. But when you go home, you don't do the same. 
and he's not there to see it, right? And that marriage is falling apart, and yours is standing, and he's wondering why. Let Jesus be your example. Hallelujah. Tenacity of hope, that is endurance. When we talk about endurance, tenacity is more than endurance. It is endurance combined with the absolute certainty that we are looking for. That what we are looking for is going to transpire. Tenacity is more than hanging on. It is more than cliche. It requires deliberate effort to focus on the matter or situation with absolute certainty that God's eternal help will come true. Therefore, all fear is removed from our heart and we are free to hang on to his truth. Praise the Lord. And I want to show you one example in the book of Ruth, chapter 1, verse 14 to 18. And they lifted up their voice and wept again. And Opa kissed her mother-in-law. But Ruth clave unto her. Clave, that means she not let go. And she said, Behold, thy sister-in-law is gone back unto her people and her gods. Return thou after thy sister-in-law. And Ruth said, Entreat me not to leave thee, or to return from following after thee. For whither thou goest, I will go. And where thou lodgest, I will lodge. Thy people shall be my people, and thy God my God. Where thou diest, will I die, and there will I be buried. The Lord do so to me, and more also, if aught but death part thee and me. When she saw that she was steadfastly minded to go with her, then she left speaking unto her. Hallelujah. So we know that story, Ruth and Naomi. You know, <clears throat> Ruth, uh, how do you call her? The husband passed away. And she was in a foreign land and decided to return to a native Jewish community. But these two, uh, how do you call maids who were in the house, you know, they wanted to return with them. They said, no, these were foreigners. Don't go. Don't. No, no, no. He said, no. They said, no, no, no. One of them returned. But the other one, Naomi, we know that from the Bible, this other one who is a foreigner and who came with Ruth and settled through her, that lineage was Christ born. Hallelujah. You know, she said, your God will be my God. Your people will be my people. I will never let go. She loved the relationship. What I'm, the reason why I'm bringing this passage to you is that when you have a very strong relationship with God, it makes your hope tenacious. Is that an English word? Yeah. Becomes very strong. Huh? You don't easily break down. So don't let your issues break you down. Okay, However difficult it might be, don't let them break you down. Just hang on to the word of God. Separate yourself from the issues that are happening. And cleave or attach yourself to the truth of the word of God. And let God's word be true. And every man a liar. Hallelujah. That is how you give glory to God because now you have shifted from the issues and with your own ways, you have left them and you are holding on to God's method. And when you do that, you give him the chance to glorify himself in your life. Hallelujah. Revelation chapter 3 verse 10 says that because thou hast kept to keep means you are tenacious. You are very, very determined. Because you have kept the word of my patience. The word of my patience. So you can see that believing God's word requires that you be patient also. Because things don't always happen instantly. Some things take time. He says, I also will keep thee from the hour of temptation. We shall come upon all the world to try them that dwell upon the earth. So you can see that in this world, 
there is going to be a lot of things that will try all of us. I mean, Christians. Okay, so some of the things that you are facing today is not necessarily because you are bad. It's not because you are, I don't know, God has kind of like, is, I believe that God has allowed these things and you can make a change. And all that is required of you is to just believe God and let God be true. Hallelujah. Matthew chapter 16. Real quickly, it says, uh, you remember the story of Jesus and the disciples. It says, uh, who do men say that I am? You know, and some were saying that you are a prophet, etc., etc. But he says, you the disciples, what do you call me? You know, and Simon Peter said in verse 16, thou art the Christ, the son of the living God. He said it with his open mouth. He opened his mouth and said it. And that is the part that a lot of people miss. You have to be in the habit of saying what God has said in his word. Don't just be thinking it, but also say it. It really, really helps. Because when you say it, it is like you give, you know, chance to the work of the Holy Spirit to take over because you have released God's word into the atmosphere so that it will begin to work and have effect upon your life and the circumstances. So Peter said, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. And Jesus said, wow, flesh and blood. It is not a human being. That gave you that kind of wisdom. It is God, my Father. So I pray to you, for you, that God will give you that divine wisdom also. So that you can have that revelation and, you know, see from the perspective of God's Word. And begin to call the things in your life. That may be, you know, going on that you have no clue what it is. Call it. By what God, you know, calls it. And I believe that things will change when Christ is involved. Hallelujah. The last but not the least, Luke chapter 1. There is always a reward for hope. If you follow hope, it brings a big reward. Because hope is rooted in God, right? The God of hope. Luke chapter 1 verse 44. For lo, as soon as the voice of thy salutation sounded in mine ears, the babe leaped in my womb for joy. And blessed is she that believed. For there shall be a performance of those things which were told her from the Lord. And Mary said, my soul doth magnify the Lord. And my spirit has rejoiced in God my Savior. For he has regarded the low estate of his handmaiden. For behold, from henceforth, from henceforth, from henceforth, all generations shall call me blessed. I pray that you can also take that spot as you believe God's word and begin to say, from henceforth, I will declare God's word and let the next generation, let my sons and daughters call me blessed because I stood upon the word of God. All generations shall call me blessed for he that is mighty has done to me great things and holy is his name. Okay? When it says holy is his name, it's not, I want you to understand because God is, when we say he's holy, he, he does everything and it is just the right and perfect thing. And Mary is regarding what the angel said. And just, he, she just believed in God for the things that have been spoken concerning her life. That Jesus was going to be, you know, she, she was going to carry that baby. And the baby would be a savior of the world. And his mercy, verse 50, and his mercy is on them that fear him from generation to generation. Do you want God's mercy? Then fear the Lord. Hallelujah. 
got to fear him. When you fear God, mercy will come and knock on your door. Hallelujah. I pray this morning that somehow you have been introduced or maybe encouraged at the point where you are in your life and your marriage and your family concerning things that may be happening that you are wondering where, when help will come from. I believe that a lot of it lies in your hands. How you exercise your faith in the Lord. And how you hope in God. Because our God is a God of hope. He has given us so much to hold on to. Cleave on to it. His word. And don't let go. Remember. Those who observe lying vanities. They do what? They forsake their own mercy. So if you want God's mercy. Fear him. Obey his word. And his mercy will visit you and bring about a situation that is way beyond what you yourself can imagine. May God bless his word. May God bless your life and your family. May God bless your, bless your wife. May God bless your husband. May God bless your sons and your daughters. May God bless your health. May God bless your children their future in the name of Jesus. May God bless this church to carry us into the next level by the power of his grace in Jesus' name. Amen. Let us pray. Father, we exalt you and praise you. Your understanding is infinite. You are excellent in all your ways and designs. You excel in all your achievements. We therefore exalt your name. Your wisdom is profound. Your strength is enormous. And wisdom you have made all your works. All things occur according to your perfect design and will. Holy are thou, O God. We bless your name. You are unsearchable in all your judgments. Your ways are past finding out. Therefore we exalt you and praise you. And Father, as we live, we call on you that you be a fresh and dew on us as to the morning. Let us flourish like the lily, O Lord. Let everything we do go on well for us. Let our roots go down deeply as the seed of Lebanon. Establish us, Father. Establish the works of our hands. Let our branches spread out in every direction. Lord, bring success to us in everything we do. Let our beauty be as the olive tree. Yes, grant us good health, O oh our Lord. And let the sun of righteousness rise and shine on us. Let us be under the healing wings, O oh mighty God of yours. May we go forth as the morning, as the calves leaping from their stalls, Lord. Let your joy, O oh Lord, fill us and lead us. May you favor us and protect us. We bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's share the grace. Let the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives. We shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. We shall live and not die, but declare the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Amen. And God bless you all.